And I'm really, really happy to have uh, Clara Durodi with us today to speak to exactly this. Who here in the room knows AI? I mean, actually, I'll, I'll take hand. Who here in the room genuinely believes they have a depth of insight and knowledge into artificial intelligence? Oh, come on. Someone's going to have to. Great. So, sir, can you come up on stage? No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll save it for questions. Without further ado, let me please invite Clara to the stage, hopefully with a round of applause, after which we'll have a session to discuss. Clara. Thank you. Thank you. It's, um, it's a privilege to be here in front of you today, um, the top leaders of, um, of this industry, at a leading in, um, conference talking about um, financial services and the future of financial services. My name is Clara Rodi, as you've just found out. I am the founder and the CEO of Cognitive Finance Group. We are an advisory and investment company specialized in applied artificial intelligence. With our consultancy business, we work with financial services companies to advise them on the correct adoption of AI. Um, my background is asset and wealth management, actually. I'm not a computer scientist. In 2014, I left the city with a view to pursue a PhD which sits at the intersection of neuroscience, artificial intelligence, and wealth management. Because when I left the city, I realized that the systems we're having in place, helping us do our job, which is looking after our clients' money, they're not just there. We're not doing a good job in order to be able to deliver what we are supposed to deliver to our clients good service. So I decided to pursue that PhD, and in the midst of it, my entrepreneur um, bug ha has come up to life again. So we set up this business. Um, I'm in partnership with a group of um, computer scientists, machine learning specialists, and I'm the only one who doesn't have a PhD yet. Mm -hmm. But I'm working on it. So today, I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to take you down the memory lane, and then I'm going to talk to you about trust. And then I'm going to talk to you about AI. And then I'm going to talk to you about how AI can help us build trust. And in the process, I'll just dive into a few um, concepts um, about um, artificial intelligence. But I want you to know that I will be talking to you today from the perspective of a practitioner. I'm a practical person. I wouldn't adopt technology for the sake of it, because I don't think that's the point. Technology is here to help us, and technology is successful only as long as it helps people to do uh, and people adopt it. In our case, I would like to start with asking you a question. Do you remember what happened in January 2007? Yes. Anyone? iPhone? That's a very good answer. Is it right? <laughs> and that is because probably you've seen my slides I have yesterday. I, I have not seen the slides. It's pure natural intelligence. <laughs> but I'm going to ask you something else. It's just something else that's happened in 2007, January. It was me using these phones. And I was using these phones only for uh, texting. And my son was playing on them, all sorts of games. When the iPhone came out, you're free to remind yourself, if you want mm. to, um, to see how it felt 2007 on phones. When the iPhone came out, my son was very keen to buy it, new gadget. I said, no way, you know, just like we don't use this um, for anything else apart from texting. But then 2007 meant something else for our industry. It meant the beginning of transformation for us, because the day our customers have started having that thing in their pocket, that's when our proposition to our customer has start, had to start to change. How many of you realized in 2007 that this little gadget is going to transform the way we, we think of our business and how we engage with our customers? I wasn't one, and I put my hand up. I was a senior executive in financial services wearing a paper bag on my head. What is trust? Let's unpack the concept. It's reliability, consistency, transparency, and competence. I'm reliable 
because you know that I'm always there. I'm consistent because I always keep my word and do what I say. And I'm transparent. If I'm late, I always say why I'm late and how long I think I'm going to be late. And in different cases, I'm competent. And I put everything on me. But you can see how this concept translates in the way we engage with our, with our customers. Trust built in our industry sits on these four pillars. Reliability, consistency, transparency, and competence. The experts say that trust is choosing to make something which is important to you vulnerable to the actions of someone else. So our client, clients in financial services, they give us something which is very important to them, their wealth, their data. And then, through everything we do, we build our trust or diminish that trust. And as we know, this industry is currently suffering of a deficit of trust. So what is AI? AI, <clears throat> it's a set of techniques. So anyone who says anything else, it is possible um, to accept it. But ultimately, it is a set of techniques. Anything from machine learning, natural language processing, expert systems, vision, speech, planning, and robotics. There are many definitions of these two terms. But just to simplify things, general AI is a system which hasn't been built yet. But it's a system which can do pretty much anything and everything and would know everything about everything in this world. That's not possible. It hasn't been invented. But narrow AI, it's basically anything else which is not general. Again, it's a very simplistic uh, sketch of concepts. And then you might, might hear the, the Turing test, something like machines have not yet achieved the Turing test, or is that machine really that good? Is it, has it passed the Turing test? So when you interact with a machine which has passed the Turing test, you would not be able to tell the difference between a human or a machine. It would be that human-like. So this is in practical terms. So once we're here with artificial intelligence and we understand the concepts, my submission to you today is that AI can help us build trust through personalization and scaling. Trust means business growth. And these are two examples I brought for you today um, of two companies which have used machine learn, uh, sorry, AI techniques in order to improve their reach and deliver a personalized service. That's their business model. They made money and expand purely through personalization at scale. The, the slide on the left, uh, sorry, the, um, the image on the left is a photograph I took um, earlier this year in Copenhagen of Ant Financial's presentation. Hundreds of millions of clients, they use AI. That's how they manage to look after so many, so many uh, people. But I want you to have a look at the bottom line of that slide, which says it's all about deep user understanding rather than cross-selling. So what they mean, they mean personalization is key rather than selling them. They bought a mortgage, I'm going to sell him some house insurance. They bought a, um, a, I don't know, car insurance, I'm going to just try to sell them something else like mortgage. So it's not about cross-selling. Our industry has spent far too much time trying to push products and cross-sell. How many times have we used uh, that division is going to cross-sell with the other one? We are entering an age where personalization is absolutely key. And AI can deliver that. And when we are able to deliver a personalized service to our clients, that's when we build trust. Because with these techniques, we can build the four pillars of trust. We have here, I just wanted to bring with you, uh, for you today, two cases, quick wins with deep learning, which is one of the subsets of machine learning. The first one is detect suspicious ATM activities. And these are solutions which have been already deployed very successfully. And a deep learning system is capable of, of, of almost instantly looking at various databases, law enforcement, video footages, 
and identify when, assist when suspicious activity uh, is happening, and in some cases, stop it. Computing insurance claims, it's another quick win with deep learning. When through, purely through um, submitting a photograph of the damage of the car, a system is capable of identifying or calculating the cost of repairing the car and spare parts and provide a quote. And the third one is in cyber security. Detect and prevent cyber attacks is when a system is capable of just analyzing a lot of data, identify patterns, look at how the keystrokes are hit, and alert humans or stop certain transactions. But where is AI? Someone asked me the other day, um, where is AI? Well, AI is everywhere at the moment, and it will continue to be so. Um, so in our industry, we see AI in um, customer help desks. Those are the chatbots, data entry applications. is the RPA, but we need to put some AI on it, make it intelligent. Mutual funds performance comments. My background is in um, asset management, and um, many times I would find myself right, sitting down and writing performance reports. That's natural language generation technique, doing that today. Drones and autonomous cars, that's autonomous agents, of course. Fraud detection, big data analytics, visual searches, visual recognition and natural language processing for market research and sentiment analysis. And then I'd like to just very quickly just take you through how we do it. And I'd like to say this to you, because when you think of adopting AI in your own um, companies, please try to, to learn for, from, from this experience, because originally the, our business was set up to really deliver a matchmaking or build systems for our clients. But we soon realized that the, the, the need to educate board level executives and senior management mm -hmm. has become a key component of a good delivery. So we educate people through master classes, executives, we assess, we build a roadmap, and it's key here to have a long term vision, holistic vision of what you do. We scope everything, every step of the way identifying where to start, because you can't solve every problem at the same time. We select systems. We either do matchmaking or we just build systems for our clients. And we implement it. We stay with our clients through the implementation stage. And here we talk about AI and big data architecture. There are some errors in adoption we have seen so far, and I'd like to share them with you. Um, one rather concerning there is no joined up AI strategy. We, um, we are yet to see that um, amongst the people we've discussed so far. There are also wrong choices of AI systems and vendors. People, clients usually go and just buy stuff on their own and they think they, they got it. But you can't get it unless you know the tech behind it. There's no informed engagement at the board level. The level of education at the board, it's very low. And if the board is not well educated in this space, they, they won't be able to give a strong mandate to, to their teams. There are no trusted advisor with proven AI experience, and that's very key. And they also, I've seen that people add AI onto a poorly designed processes. If it's a poorly designed process, it's not gonna change even if you put AI on it. So here are my three conclusions for today. AI is the new alchemy for business growth. We can, businesses cannot just really think that they, they just do, they can do nothing about adoption of AI. This is not a fad. This is not something which, you know, is going to come and go and it's a new version of an iPhone. I'm going to buy the next one. Job done. This technology, it's uh, the equivalent of your future is secured for the next generations. Quite a lot of people said to me, I, I don't want to be seen to be talking about adopting AI because my people will get a bit nervous about hearing us adopting AI because they're going to lose their jobs. Well, my, my position is that if you want to keep your jobs, then you have to adopt this. Algorithms have parents. This is important because it talks about ethics and governance. And when you adopt AI, make sure that you ask the hard questions and make sure who you bring in your organizations. It's going to be very expensive to change it later on. And use a good advisor to guide you through the whole journey. <laughs>